I would now like to introduce to you Frederick H. Tees, Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. Representative Tees. On behalf of the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey, it gives me great pleasure, sir, to welcome you, the President-elect of our country, to the capital of our state. Under any circumstances, it would be most fitting for us to show our respects to the chosen Chief Magistrate of the Republic. But now, the best, the bravest, the wisest, stand still in doubt and awe at the posture of our national affairs. I am happy to give you, sir, the assurances of the descendants of those whose blood was shed in the cause of liberty upon this soil, of the continued devotion of this state to the Constitution and the Union founded by our fathers and that our people will heartily cooperate with you in all constitutional efforts for a speedy and peaceable settlement of the differences which now, unhappily, distract our country. We sympathize with you and the difficulties with which you are surrounded. Already have the dark clouds of disunion obscured a portion of those stars which lately shown in an undivided constellation. But we hope that counsels of wisdom and prudence will yet dispel those clouds, and that the close of your administration will witness us once more a united and harmonious nation. Sir, permit me to introduce you to the members of this House, and at the same time assure you of their respect and best wishes for yourself personally and to renew to you the assurance of our sincere desire to join with you in every effort for the promotion of the interest of our common country. Mr. Speaker and gentlemen, I have just enjoyed the honor of a reception by the other branch of the legislature and I return to you and them my thanks for the reception which the people of New Jersey have given. Through their chosen representatives to me as the representatives for the time being of the majesty of the people of the United States. I appropriate to myself very little of the demonstrations of respect of which I have been greeted. I think little should be given to any man, but that it should be a manifestation of adherence to the Union and the Constitution. I understand myself to be received here by the representatives of the people of New Jersey, a majority of whom differ in opinion from those with whom I have acted. This manifestation is therefore to be regarded by me as expressing their devotion to the Union, the Constitution, and the liberties of the people. You, Mr. Speaker, have well said that it is time when the bravest and wisest look with doubt and awe upon the aspect presented by our national affairs. Under these circumstances, you will readily see why I should not speak in detail of the course until I deem it best to pursue. It is proper that I should avail myself of all the information and all the time at my command in order that when the time arrives in which I must speak officially, I should be able to take the ground which I deem best and safest, and from which I may have no occasion to swerve. I shall endeavor to take this ground I deem most just to the north, the east, the west, the south, and the whole country. I take it. I take it, I hope, in good temper, certainly no malice towards any section. I shall do all that I may in my power to promote a peaceful settlement of all our difficulties. The man does not live who is more devoted to peace than I am. None who would do more to preserve it 
but it may be necessary to put down the foot firmly. And if I do my duty and do it right, you will sustain me, will you not? Yeah. Received as I am by the members of a legislature, the majority of whom do not agree with me in political statements, I trust that I may yet have their assistance in piloting the ship of state through this voyage, surrounded by perils as it is. For if it should suffer attack now, there will be no pilot ever needed for another voyage. Gentlemen, I have already spoken longer than I intended and must beg leave to stop here.